Hello everybody, I want to welcome every single one of you to our online worship service this Sunday and this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice in it for He is a good God. And as we begin our service, I want to <clears throat> pronounce blessing upon every single one of us. So shall we all look to God in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you and praise you for this wonderful time that you've given to us. This is the day that you've made for us and we shall rejoice in it. We shall give thanks to you for your goodness. And as we spend this time together in fellowshipping with you and with one another, I speak your blessing upon every single one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Once again, I welcome every one of you here in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, today we are very happy to have our very own worship team who will be leading us into this time of worshiping the Lord together. So I give this time over to the worship team. Hello guys, welcome back to our ZCFT Online Fellowship. We are so excited to have you all. And yes, uh, before we worship, uh, I'll say a word of prayer and you can join with us in worship wherever you are. Yes, Father, we want to say thank you so much for this time. Thank you for bringing us here together. Thank you for the Zoom and for the technology that you have given us to worship wherever we are. Father, your presence is here and there. That you will strengthen us as we worship. Pray that you will set us free from any bondages and victory over this pandemic season. And I release your goodness to always uh, attack us with your goodness. Wash us with your goodness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, so this new song, we have a new song. It's called uh, See a Victory. Why don't you turn to your left, right, or like you can just text the inbox that uh, Jesus loves you or uh, welcome to the online service here. Yeah. <laughs> right.
Thank you, worship team, for leading us into that wonderful time of worshiping the Lord together in the presence of His holiness. May God bless you. Thank you so much. I would like to take this time to make an announcement. And uh, this is what I've been announcing every week. And that is to say that this coming Sunday, that is the 15th of this month, 15th November, is our Foundation Sunday. And uh, I want to ask you to continue to pray for this service, that God will bless each one of us and that His name will be glorified through our Foundation Sunday celebration and I want you to uh, invite everybody that you know who have been a part of uh, our church in the past and even if they're not a part of our church in the past if you know anybody just extend this invitation to them to come and share this time together as we celebrate our Foundation Sunday. So that is the announcement that I would like to make. And uh, the other announcement is that I want you to know that we have ongoing uh, Bible study that is uh, going on every week. Uh, every Monday we have at uh, 6.30 p.m. Every Wednesday we have at 6 p.m. And every Friday we have at 6.30 p.m. So we spend this time together in June studying the Word of God together. And so I want to urge you to come and be a part of this amazing time of studying the Word of God. Uh, we are going through different books in the Bible. And it is such an amazing time that we're spending together learning as the Holy Spirit is our teacher and we're finding amazing truths in the Word of God. So this is quite an exciting time that we're having together. So I want to request you and urge you to come and be a part of this. The link will be given to you uh, on our Facebook page and uh, also on our uh, WhatsApp group of the church. So please uh, do check it up and come and join us for this wonderful time of studying the Word of God together. Thank you so much. This is all for today's announcement. Now it's time for us to bring our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. It's time to worship Him through our giving. And I would like to call upon uh, Brother Ajay to please lead us during this time of giving unto the Lord. Hello everyone, thank you so much Pastor Caleb for giving me this opportunity to share the word from about giving and why do we give and what's the importance of giving and whom do we give, right? Uh, I want to remind you that do you know that God is the one who always initiates first and we respond to that by receiving and then we give him back out of what we have received through him. And where do we know that from? Let's look back to the scripture in Romans 8.32. It says that he who did not spare his own son but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? This is a wonderful promise of God. Let me read it again. God who did not spare his own son, Jesus Christ, for you and I, but delivered him, Jesus Christ, for us all, every one of us. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? The moment you receive Christ, you have received everything. That's the promise of the Father. So what do we have to do now? We need to receive it by faith. 
as we receive, then we give back to Him out of the fullness that we have received in love. Do you know that God is, and God is not, and God have not asked us to do something which He has not done on the first place. He is the only one who initiates always, and He always obeys His word. He always obeys His promise. That's why all of His promises are yes and amen. And we give because He first gave us. We love because He first loved us. I, I just want to give a, a quick short example between a relationship of our parents and their children. I'm not a parent myself, but, but what I have seen and what I have learned from my mom and dad, I'm going to share that experience with you. When my parents' uh, anniversary or birthday, they were um, like, when my parents' anniversary or birthday was approaching near, and as we were growing up, they would give us money to buy gift for them. And how do we do that? Because this is in our DNA. God is the same way. His love is the currency and He gave us so that we can give Him more fully. So that He gives to us the very thing He wants from us. He's not asking something which you cannot give. In fact, He's not asking from you at all. Everything that He asks from you is worth it. And what we are doing right now is one of the form of worship. That's why we call it worship by giving. And as we give to the Lord, we give out of what we have received from God with a heart of thankfulness, gratitude, and fullness. So I want to invite every one of you right now. As we are giving right now, the numbers are in on the screen right now. You can look at them and you can start just giving to the Lord. Ask the Lord, how much did I give? What is the amount that I need to give? Ask the Lord and He's going to speak with you. And you can give into the numbers below. You can either pay by Google Pay or PTM as the numbers are on the screen. And yeah, He loves you, man. He loves you. He loves you so much. And what you are doing right now is the act of love. It's the act of love. Let me pray for everyone. Thank you, Father, for this amazing time that you have blessed us with. Thank you for speaking with us about giving and why do we do that. Thank you for your love. Thank you for what you have given to us, Lord. And out of the out of the abundance, as every one of us we are giving right now to, to you, Lord, we believe that the small, even the small seed that we are sowing right now, is going to bear a fruit of abundance, because in you is everything, Lord. Thank you so much, everyone. Now I just declare prosperity. I just declare success. I just declare uh, like your intervention in everyone's life right now in jesus name i pray amen amen i just want to bless every one of you and i just declare financial success right now in jesus and yeah i would like to welcome brother james here with us who is here today is going to talk about victory for, uh, over pandemic so sit back relax get your notebook bible and ready because he is here for you Amen. Praise the Lord. Greetings to all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is always good to be back home sharing the gospel of grace to all my uh, beloved Jatsi FD family. And I am so thankful to my beloved pastor, Pastor Kelly, for giving me this great opportunity again. Okay. It is really uh, and honored for me today I would like to share a few things about how we can live an abundant life during this pandemic season so I name today's topic as victory over pandemic and the scripture portion uh, which I have taken from is Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11 to 12 uh, well uh, as we all know that uh, this pandemic has affected us in various ways and one of them is financial crisis. Many people lose their jobs, nations 
uh, economic breakout. And as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 15, that which is has already been. Meaning, what is happening right now has already happened before. Uh, you know, history repeats itself. So we can, we, can, we can look at how God supplied for his people in the history. And, and, and how, uh, you know, he provides for us today. Now, the interesting fact is that the, the, uh, the book of, in the book of Genesis, uh, we can see that there was a global famine during the time of Joseph. And now, in the end time, there is also a, a global financial famine. Even financial experts are at a loss. They do not know what to do next. And uh, uh, news reporters, news, uh, they are like so negative. They are so often negative and depressing. So today's situation can be described in the scripture, which I have quoted for today. Let me read out Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12, it says, For man also doesn't know his time. Like fish taken in a cruel net, like birds caught in a snare, so the sons of man are snared in an evil time when it falls suddenly upon them. See, this is kind of situation we are uh, facing right now. But my dear brothers and sisters, let me, let, me, let me share you some good news of what God is doing during this evil time. Let me turn to you uh, the scripture which I have just read, just uh, before that scripture, which is uh, verse 11 of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Let me read out once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. The Solomon says, uh, I return and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor bread to the wise, nor riches to man of understanding, nor favor, of, favor to man of skill, but time and chance happen to them all. Hallelujah. That's amazing good news, right? You know, in the, in, the, in the natural world, we all know that the fastest person always wins the rest, right? But the Bible says that time and chance happen to them all. The scripture which I have just read, the last line of verse 11. This means that being the fastest to read a financial report or, or being the fastest to reply an email may not matter. And being the strongest may not win you a legal or financial battle. So according to the scripture, which we have just read, that is Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 11, it's, it's not necessary. It is not necessary that a provision will flow to the wise. It is not necessary that it will flow to the wise people only, nor man of understanding. Here, here the word wise which is mentioned in verse 11, uh, referred to natural people. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the same word was, was used in Pharaoh's time, in Pharaoh's magician and wise men. So it is, it is not true that, that, that just you possess a very high IQ uh, or a very great knowledge, qualification or, or experience you will have riches. No, that's not true. God's favor doesn't belong only to the man of skill because those who are most skillful may not necessarily need favor, right? So the good news is that you need not to be fastest, smartest, or more qualified in order to have success. You only need to ask God for his favor. You, 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 you need to ask God for his best upon your time. What is important for us today is to look to God for his favor and his timing. 
when God puts you at the right place and at the right time, you are blessed. And no one can take that away from you. Hallelujah. Dear friends, it is very important to know and to remember that what is happening right now is not from God. Some people think that uh, God is using this virus to judge or to punish people. But the funny thing is that the same people used, you know, hand sanitizer, wear masks uh, in order to protect from this virus, which is very contradicting because since they believe that God is behind all these viruses, then they are standing against the will of God by using hand sanitizer and wearing masks. Come on. Let's 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 open our eyes a little wider and see around uh, see around ourselves. Like people are suffering, dying, losing their loved ones. Can this be the work of God? Seriously, dear friends, let me remind you once again: God is not using this virus to pro, uh, to, to to teach us or, or to teach us a lesson or to judge us. In fact, he doesn't need to use such evil things to teach us a lesson. Our God is a capable God to discipline or to teach us a lesson in a very loving way as a father disciplines his children. Remember, he is our loving father, our daddy God. Amen. Now, let's look to today's scripture. Uh, uh, the scripture portion which I have taken today, which is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. Let's look back the same scripture again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. Here it says, For man doesn't know his time, like fish taken in a cruel net. Just underline that cruel net. Okay? Like birds caught in a snare, so the sons of man are snared in an evil time. When it falls, suddenly upon them. See, this cruel net that the world is caught in, this financial famine was not, you know, was not caused by God. Although the sons of man may be snared like birds, as we can see many uh, financial experts are losing their money. But this doesn't apply to you and I. As, he, as, as, as we are the believers of Christ. Amen. Now you might be thinking, how do I know this? <laughs> if, we, if we look at the same scripture once again, the, the sons of man, which is mentioned here, uh, the sons of man is referring to the sons of Adam, which means mankind or, or, or just a natural man. Therefore, uh, those who are caught in, 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 in the evil times are the sons of Adam, meaning the natural man. Some of us might uh, think that we are facing a very bad days, like we are also caught in this net too. But my dear friends, it might seem that way, but that's not true. As a believer, we are the sons of God, not the sons of Adam. That's why exactly mentioned in John 1.12. That is, whoever believes God gave them the right to become his children. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and once we become his children, once we become his sons and daughters, we cannot be unborn again. Once you are born again, you cannot be unborn again. So, so let's believe that our Heavenly Father wants to give us success. So, so let's find out. Uh, about being at the right place and, and right time which God has placed us. Now, let me go back to our today's scripture once again, which is verse 12 of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Verse 12 of Ecclesiastes chapter 9. When we look at, uh, uh, at this cruel net, when we look at this cruel net mentioned here, uh, the good news is God can guide us from being caught in cruel net. And, and he always does to his people. Especially to his children. Alright. Let me share one of my testimony. Uh, which was happened almost 12 years ago. 
uh, it was during my graduation period. I was in Guwahati, Assam. Uh, that day I was, you know, about to go out of my room to buy a recharge card for my mobile phone. But due to some reason, I stepped back and, and, and plan to go after an hour. When I, when I just sit back to my room, uh, you know what happened? Within a very few minutes, there was a very huge bomb blast. On the road side, uh, the bomb blast was just happened to the road side near to that mobile saw. My room was shaking. My room was shaking by that blast. You know, uh, many people died and, and many are injured. <laughs> but I was safe. That's the reason today I'm standing before you sharing this testimony to you all. This is one of the examples how God can, you know, lead us to be at the right place at the right time, even though when we are not aware of it. So it is very important for us to be at the right time and at the right place. Dear brothers and sisters, let's not forget our, our today's scripture, which we have just read. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, that the race is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong. Okay? But the time and chance happen to them all. Hallelujah. God wants you to have the right timing, which is his perfect timing and nothing is left to chance because you are God's beloved child. Uh, sorry, God's beloved child. You are God's beloved child. And the Bible says that the steps of a good man are or ordered by the Lord. Which the psalmist says, and you are that good man. Because according to 2 Corinthians 5.21, you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so happy to share this uh, wonderful good news during this pandemic period. So my dear friends, no matter how strongly we are uh, surrounded by all types of bad news, let's look beyond our uh, natural circumstances and believe that Jesus has already overcome the world on our behalf, on your behalf. And let's pray confidently and flow in his grace god bless you and thank you so much for listening to me attentively thank you brother james for the wonderful word of god for the word of encouragement that you brought to us may god continue to bless you as you live for him now it's time for us to receive the lord's uh, table to participate in the Lord's table together and uh, I would like you to be prepared with the elements that you have the bread and the cup it's okay to use any uh, elements that you have with you even water will do a piece of bread and a cup of juice this elements represents the Lord's body and his blood and so <clears throat> we are doing this to remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for you and for me. So if <clears throat> you have your Bible with you, turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2 and 3 onwards. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus Christ on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took breath, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you do this and as often as you eat this 
bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Bible is saying we are to do this in remembrance of Jesus and what he did for us at the cross of Calvary. And that we are proclaiming his death until he comes. That means we are supposed to be doing this until he comes back, proclaiming his death. Actually, what we are doing is we are declaring it. We are speaking out, even as we are partaking of this Lord's table together, the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did the death of the Lord Jesus Christ bring for us? It says in verse 25, it brings the new covenant and the new covenant as opposed to the old covenant. The old covenant says you must do this in order to receive salvation and blessing. You must do the law. You must keep the law. You must perform. But the new covenant says you don't do anything. except to believe in the death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because the death of the Lord Jesus Christ brings the new covenant where there is forgiveness of sins for all of your sins and where there is cleansing, where there is new life. And all you do is believe in this and when you believe the Bible declares you became righteous because this is a gift this new life this forgiveness this redemption is given to you as a free gift <clears throat> you don't pay anything you don't accomplish anything to receive this we receive a gift simply with gratitude, with thankfulness in our hearts. And that is what we are to do. We remember his death. We remember that the broken body is given for you and for me. And the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, by his stripes we were healed. And when we partake of this broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive our healing. And that is what we have today. And if anybody is sick, I proclaim healing over you, even as you partake of this together with us. And the cup is the new covenant in my blood, said Jesus this new covenant, this blood washes away all of our sins. So when we do this, it's not about how sinful we are and it's not about uh, meditating on our sins. It is not about examine, examining our own sinfulness, how bad we, we were and asking God for forgiveness. In Him, we have redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. We have forgiveness, the Bible says. And we simply remember that. And that is what Jesus is asking us to do. We have forgiveness of sins. And when we remember that we have forgiveness through His blood, what do we do? We become grateful. That is what the Lord wants us to do. So let us give thanks to the Lord for His blood and for His body that was broken for us as we partake of this Lord's Supper together. Shall we look to God in prayer? Father, we thank you for this broken body of yours through which we receive our healing. And we thank you for your blood that washes away all of our sins. <clears throat> and because Jesus washes away all of our sins by His blood, we can come boldly to your throne of grace 
and ask for help in any times of need. And so we give thanks to you and we remember right now what Jesus has done for us and we proclaim his death. We proclaim the gospel, the good news, even as we partake of this together. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Let us partake of the Lord's uh, table together with gratefulness in our hearts. Let's receive the benediction. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father, our Abba Father, our Daddy, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one until we meet again. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being here with us this Sunday. It's been amazing. And uh, I speak blessing over your life. Shalom and peace.